Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, what I'm going to do is give you an overview of GNOME Web. GNOME Web is a browser that's available for Linux users, and it's very simple. So simple, in fact, you can probably consider it the Safari of Linux. It doesn't have a ton of bells and whistles, but it's very effective at doing its only job, giving you access to your favorite websites. And in this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you'll need to know to start using it. And we'll get started in just a moment, but before we do, I wanted to take a moment to mention the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which has just been updated with brand new products. And if you like Linux and fun t-shirts, you'll feel right at home there. There's some awesome designs, like Mona Tuxa, that's Mona Lisa reimagined as a Linux penguin, because of course it is. You'll also find the classic Aptostall coffee tee, which is what I'm wearing today, and the Blue Screen of Death t-shirt, which is oddly comforting once you've escaped Windows. And here's the thing, running a channel like this comes with a lot of costs. I'm talking gear, hosting, coffee, lots of coffee, and every dollar from the merch shop helps keep Learn Linux TV alive and independent. Heck, it might even help me finally pay off my student loan debt. One day. So if you want to support Linux learning and look cool doing it, then definitely check out the shop. I would really appreciate it. Anyway, with that out of the way, it's time to dive into GNOME Web, so let's do that right now. So what exactly is GNOME Web? Well, I mentioned earlier that it's a web browser, so let's start there. There's more than a handful of web browsers available for Linux, some of them being cross-platform, while others are exclusive to our platform. GNOME Web is a browser that's specific to Linux, and it's one of the simplest browsers available, both in terms of ease of use as well as its feature set. In GNOME Web, you could do most of the browsing tasks that you'd expect. You can open a website, bookmark a web page, switch between tabs, you get the idea. Its performance is really good, and it's also very reliable. As an aside, it's worth mentioning that I have an entire video that goes over details of common web browsers within Linux, so be sure to check out that video if you haven't already done so. I'll leave a card for that video right about here. Anyway, back to GNOME Web. Perhaps the biggest difference with GNOME Web is that it's part of the GNOME desktop environment. If you use GNOME as your desktop of choice, it'll fit right in. GNOME Web uses the same design aesthetic as GNOME, and is considered to be GNOME's official web browser. However, you don't have to be a GNOME user in order to install GNOME Web. Even if another desktop environment such as Plasma is more your flavor, it'll work just fine. But should you install it? Well, GNOME Web is a browser that will appeal to some people more than others. The thing is, it has a more limited feature set when compared to other browsers like Firefox or Chrome, so if you're used to a browser with a ton of bells and whistles, you might not like GNOME Web. On the other hand, if you prefer to keep things simple, then you'll absolutely love it. The thing is, GNOME Web is extremely simplistic. It focuses on browsing and not much else. It's probably for this reason that most distributions default to Firefox and not GNOME Web, considering that Firefox checks more boxes. That said, even if you don't think you'd enjoy using GNOME Web, you may as well check it out anyway. You can always uninstall it if you end up not liking it, but even then, it might make sense to keep it installed as a secondary browser just to have something in your back pocket. Next, let's take a look at the actual installation process for GNOME Web. If you want to check it out, how exactly do you go about installing it? Well, there's two methods. You can install GNOME Web from your distribution's package repositories, or you could go for the Flatpak version. In most cases, you could simply use GNOME software, or whatever your distro software manager happens to be, and search for GNOME Web. Depending on your distribution, you may see a drop-down that gives you a choice between the distribution package and the Flatpak version, but not everyone will see this. For those that prefer to use the command line, you can install the package for GNOME Web via your distribution's package manager. I'll show some example commands on the screen right now for some of the more popular distributions. If you're curious why packages often refer to the browser as Epiphany, that's because GNOME Web used to be called that before they changed its name. And for whatever reason, distributions are still referring to it under its old name. It's just what it is. On my end, I'm on Fedora, so what I'm going to do is install GNOME Web right here. So what I'll do is access Activities Overview right here, and then I'll click on Software. And what I'll do is click the search box right here. I'm going to search for GNOME Web. And here it is. 
It's just simply called web within GNOME software. I'll click on that. And we have a few different options here. I'm running Fedora on my end. And right here, this is the dropdown that I mentioned earlier. It's going to install the Flatpak version on Fedora by default, which is really cool. You could also get it from FlatHub or the RPM version. The RPM version is going to be the distro package, but I think it's perfectly fine to use the default right here for the Flatpak coming from Fedora Linux. So I'm going to leave it on that. Now on your end, you might have just the FlatHub version or a Debian version. Just try to get the Flatpak version if you can. Anyway, I'll click install. All right, so GNOME Web is officially installed and we can open it by simply clicking open right here. However, what I'm going to do is just open it by normal means, going to show apps right here and GNOME Web is going to be listed among your other applications. So if you're using a different desktop environment, you just access your applications menu and you should find GNOME Web available. When it comes to setting it as the default browser, I'll leave that up to you. I'll just say no on my end. I'm just going to keep it simple. But anyway, here we have GNOME Web. And like I mentioned earlier, it's a very simplistic web browser. You can see that there's really not all that much going on. We have an address bar. We have the ability to create a new tab. So pretty self-explanatory there. I'll be showing you more about that shortly. But essentially, it's really easy to use. You just type a website here in the address bar, like I just did. Go to any website that you want to go to. I'll make the window a little bit bigger. And here we have a website. Now, obviously, we have the ability to create a new tab. That's a core browser feature anyway. I'll just go to a random website. I'll go to DistroWatch, just as a random example. Anyway, here we have DistroWatch. It really doesn't matter what website you open. I just wanted to have another tab to switch between here just to kind of show you what it looks like when you have more than one tab open. And another tab I'll go to is the community forums for this particular channel at community.learnlinux.tv. Definitely go there and check out the community if you haven't already done so. But that'll give us a third tab here. So here we have the community forums. Now what I wanna do is show you an alternative way of switching between tabs. It's really easy. We have this little icon right here. It looks like four squares. If we click on that, it's going to give us an overview of all of the tabs that we have open, which is really, really cool. You can also create a new tab from here as well. You can hit escape to go back to the tab that you're on. So there's two ways of switching tabs. You could just do it like this. But if you have a bunch of tabs open, you can get the overview and switch from here as well, as you can see. So far, it's pretty easy, as you can see, but let's go through more of the features. Now, another thing you could do is bookmark websites. Again, another basic browser feature, I know, but this is a basic browser, so it makes sense. Right here, we have our bookmarks menu. We can click that right there to access our bookmarks, but as you can see, I don't currently have any. Anyway, to create a bookmark, we can click the star right here in the address bar. That's for bookmarking a page, so I'll click on that. And once you do that, it's going to bring up this dialog here so you can name the bookmark. On my end, I'll just simplify the name right here. You get the idea. You can add tags as well if that's something that you want to do. But um, it's bookmarked, so I'll close this here. And if I drop the bookmarks menu down, we can see that Learn Linux TV has now been bookmarked. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I wanted to let you guys know about something really cool that I created recently. I put together the Ultimate Linux Commands Cheat Sheet, a downloadable PDF that covers all the essential Linux commands, as well as some great bash aliases, hardening tips, and other nuggets that I've picked up over the years. For just a $3 donation, it's yours, and it makes a great reference for those of you that work with a terminal. Every purchase helps keep this channel going, and it also helps me justify the amount of caffeine I go through while I edit these videos. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting Linux Learning. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. The next feature that I want to show you guys is the concept of web apps, which is fully supported here in GNOME Web, and this is really, really cool. So to create a web app, what you do is you navigate to any of your favorite websites. Once you're there, we'll click the menu right here, 
And then we'll go down to Web App. So click on that. And we're going to install as web app. So essentially you want to be on the tab that's for the website that you want to create a web app for. And you do it through the menu. So what I'll do is click right here. And then of course we can simplify the name, which is what I'm going to do. Now click create. And that should be all there is to it. Now check this out. When I go to the activities overview and then go to show apps, we have Learn Linux TV as a web app. And just like any web app, I could pin to Dash and have Learn Linux TV or whatever website you want right here in the panel. You could also think of things like Proxmox or any apps that you might use, Unify controllers, PFSense, whatever apps you use on a regular basis. You can create it as a web app, which makes it an application or treat it as an application like any of the others. So I'll click on it. Let me just get rid of this right here. I'll just move it to a different workspace just to kind of clean the screen a bit. Now you can see right here that a web app has a more limited interface. We don't have the ability to create a tab. It's just a self-contained web page, basically. And we have different options here than we would in the full browser, so it's going to be a little bit different. Now, what you'll do at this point is just add any websites that you want as a web app. I think it's a really cool feature. Let's just go ahead and close this and go back to the main web browser. And what you could also do here is click here, go down to web apps and manage your web apps. Right here, I only have one. I could delete the web app if I don't want it to exist anymore. I'll leave that up to you, but you'll see a list of web apps here as you create them and then you can manage them. And again, I got there by clicking the menu, going to web apps and then manage web apps. And that brought me right here. So for example, just to add another one, Let's just add this one, add the forums. We'll install it as a web app. I'll just simplify the name and add the word forums right here. Click create. And what we'll do is just go back into the web apps list right here, manage web apps. And now we have the two. And we see the forums icon right here. So how cool is that? Now there's some other options that I want to show you guys. Um, in fact, I haven't shown you any of the options as of yet. So let's do that right now. So we'll go here to the menu and then down to preferences. We don't have a ton of options here in GNOME Web, but we do have a few that are noteworthy. Now under custom, we could set the start page to whatever start page we want. We could also set it up to be a blank page every time it starts. But I like to make the home page something in particular. So what I'm going to do is just set it to my website. You could use whatever your preferred start page happens to be. It doesn't really matter. So I set it there. We also have an option to choose our search engine. So we have DuckDuckGo by default if you prefer Google. Then you can select Google right here to use that search engine. You could also click to add a search engine. You have to know the search engine string. It goes beyond the scope of this video, but usually other search engines will give you whatever the search string or search address happens to be. But I'm going to leave it on Google. I think that's good enough. DuckDuckGo is better for privacy purposes if you're concerned about that kind of thing. I um, just wanted to show you that you could change it. You can also start in incognito mode, which is also something that I haven't shown you yet. So if you want to have a private browsing session, you could just go up here to the menu, new incognito window. That's not going to save any of your history. You can see that you have an eyeball icon with a line through it right here to let you know that you're in incognito mode. It also says private browsing right here. And this is very useful if you want to test a website, if you're a web developer and you want to test a website when you're not logged into it, but it's something you're normally logged in. Developers use this constantly for testing that kind of thing. But I'm going to just actually close this window here and return back to preferences. Restore tabs on startup is enabled, and I like that. That essentially means that you could close the browser with all of your tabs that are open right there, just leaving them open and going back into the browser. And to make it easier, I'm going to pin this to my dash right here so I can get back to it a lot easier. 
So now what I could do is just open GNOME Web from there. And as you can see, it's opening with the same tabs that I had last time. But anyway, let's go back to preferences and I'll show you a few more things. Now, mouse gestures are pretty cool. I don't have a touchpad on this particular computer, so I won't be able to show you that. You can also switch immediately to new tabs when they're open. So if you right click a link, for example, and open it in a new tab, it'll automatically switch you to that. So if you enable this, then what I could do is just click on latest updates. I'll just open it in a new tab and it switch to it immediately, just like that. Pretty self-explanatory so far. And continuing, we have a few options here. Let's go to appearance. We change our font style. And notice that dark mode is not an option here. Um, that's going to be controlled by your desktop environment, your operating system. So right here we have dark style. This is in the GNOME desktop. This is going to change it for everything. So for example, I'll open up a file manager window right here. So we have the browser open, we have a file manager window open. We can enable the dark style. And notice that everything changed, not just GNOME Web, but also the file manager right here. And I like the dark mode a lot better anyway, so I'm just going to leave it on this. Now there's another option I want to at least make you aware of, but unfortunately you aren't going to be able to use this, at least not as of recording time. Now, when we go to preferences right here, there used to be an option to use Firefox Sync. Now obviously we're using GNOME Web. We're not using Firefox right now. But GNOME Web at least was able to sync with a Firefox account to bring in your browsing data from Firefox. But as you can see, it's actually not an option. I'll leave a link to the bug report in the description down below. It's already been reported, but at this time, Firefox Sync is not supported currently, and it's also not an option here in the preferences. It's something that I do hope comes back. It's a little annoying that you can't sync your data, but it is what it is. Um, as of recording time, the bug report is about a year old, so it doesn't appear like it's going to return anytime soon. However, I do hope that it does because that's definitely something that's very useful. But anyway, I just showed you GNOME Web and yeah, there's not a lot to it. I mean, you have your refresh icon, your home icon here to go back to the home page. You have your address bar, an icon for creating a bookmark. You can get back to bookmarks right here. You can switch between tabs. You can also do that by clicking right here to get a tab overview like I showed you earlier. Um, it really is a basic web browser, but the thing is that might be all you need. And if all you need is a simple web browser, GNOME Web is great for that. But even if it doesn't have all the features that you need, it's a really great browser to have in your back pocket. Sometimes if you're developing a website, you want to know what it's you know going to look like on another web browser, or maybe your primary browser will have a problem, in which case you can get back to browsing the internet by having GNOME Web installed in the background. Even though it's installed, you know, you don't have to use it, but I like having something there just in case I need it. But anyway, I gave you an overview of GNOME Web and I hope it helped you out. And there's our video. In this video, we checked out GNOME Web and like you just saw, it's a very simple web browser. But again, if that's all you need, then it's great for that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to click that like button to let YouTube know. I appreciate that. And I'm going to be recording all kinds of videos for you guys here pretty soon. So definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux. And I'll see you in the next video.